<laughs> Welcome back to another week here with us at the Handy Creators. We are going to look very, very different when you guys are seeing this video. So we started this video, I would say like six months ago is when yeah. we started this build. So we both look very different <laughs> and we just got around to finishing it. So <laughs> when we first left um, our jobs, we started doing a lot of furniture builds and we got accepted into our first ever craft fair. So that consumed like 95% of our days. So the coffee table kind of just like, yeah. and then one month rolled into another and to, to another, another and to another, another craft fair and to another craft fair and to another craft fair and then months passed by next thing you know february march and we still have another coffee table so yeah we finally got around to it which is if you follow us on instagram you would see this picture right here <laughs> and we wanted to do a detailed video of how we built this in case you wanted to recreate this for yourself we are selling this um coffee table it is available on our website for sale but we do like to make these videos to show you guys how to do it in your own home teach you little skills here and there and just have a good time with us so we hope you guys enjoy and if you do recreate this please 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 show us we just got a video um of of person who did the back seating area two years it took him two years and he just sent us some videos we apps like we cried yeah okay? <laughs> we absolutely love seeing you guys and when you build the stuff like inspired by us so please share we love to see it but let's take you back to six months ago okay so this is a shape that we're going for right so this is kind of this yeah this is the design that we had kind of drawn up and then i was thinking we could build like one that's a little bit taller and then here it kind of does like a similar but like maybe less and kind of hovers over this gap right here and can do something like i don't know just like a weird different shape i mean we definitely have to play with the shapes so. how about instead of since this one's already gonna be like do the round just around no yeah we could do like like squiggly no like a stone not like not so, ch not so harsh no, not circle, but kind of like, you know, like a pebble. You know how pebbles are circle, but they're not like perfectly yes. circle. Okay. We could do something like that. Okay. I think I think I know what you mean. But yeah, we'll figure it out. We always do. <laughs> so maybe we could put this one that comes like yeah, here. Just... Or, I mean, I think they could be added wherever the person wants. Yeah, I which mean, is it... the beauty because if they want to just make it longer, they could just add it here. Or if they want something like for it not to be bigger but just wider, they can add it here. Mm -hmm. Kind of like customizable, right? Yeah. I think that could be cool. That could be cool. As we mentioned, we wanted this whole coffee table set to be something that the client can move around and customize to their home and to their specific uh, needs so we took that into consideration when selecting what hardwood we wanted to make the set out of at first we had thought to probably do it out of walnut but since we wanted to keep that uh, neutral tone open we went ahead and built this out of red oak the advantage of red oak is that not only is it an easier wood to work it also allows us to stain it any color that we wanted We often get asked why is it that in all of our builds we spend so much time picking up after each step if our shop is going to get dirty again. And the truth is is that we have figured out that is the best way for us to work. The problem is that in our shop right now our dust collection is very limited and if we just let the dust accumulate over time it becomes completely unbearable and something that we do not even feel safe working in. So after each step we always take the time to just clean up a little bit as much as we can in order to feel like we have a clean shop again. We started off by cutting the wood down to more manageable pieces that we can feed through our benchtop joiner. At the moment, our capacity for our joiner is 6 inches, so what we have learned that it's best is to cut it down to more manageable pieces that we can join and then after glue them up. Not only is this makes the whole build easier, it also gives the piece extra strength as the more glue seams there are, the more glue and more support that the piece will have. Oftentimes, if you see a piece that is too wide and does not have enough glue seams then that can cause the piece to warp over time unless you take the necessary precautions so we just finished um joining the boards and by we i mean jesus 
can you can we stop for a second and i'm gonna get super like sentimental but can we stop for a second and go back like our walnut table um went from this thickness to this thickness and you guys behind the scene there were so many tears of frustration like we were so upset and we you know we doubted ourselves so much and now look at us here like how far we've come and like you're a rock star yeah we're rock stars i know but you're a rock star we did it yeah so um joining is you know getting the word straight is one of the most tedious i think for us we like it because there's meaning to it and like jesus like joins these boards smiling when like with a smile on his face and i think it's just like noticing all the struggle we went through to, to like i don't really like do this <laughs> i do it on the plane there i can plane you a board you know like shim here shim it there like that's my stuff but like this little machine is all yours yeah it's been it's come a long way but i mean we finally yeah. got to the point where we can actually do it and not cry yeah <laughs> at least, not, about other stuff, at least not as much <laughs> <laughs> okay so we got this down um now we're going to plane, plane it. everything yeah yeah so first step here then we're gonna go paint it on the other side on the planer and and then we can actually just do the glue up yeah so something we did want to point out was that you can always skip all these steps if you don't have any of the machinery you can still do this project you would just have to purchase lumber that has already been milled um if you're searching it up which it took me a, a little while to figure this out it's basically called s4s lumber that basically means it's been surfaced and it's perfect on all four sides so you don't have to do any of this yeah um, and sometimes like if you have like um like us that we have a, a local supplier sometimes they will charge you a little bit more to give you the boards planed already and like ready for the glue up so if that isn't too, in, like in your budget and you do want to build this yourself but you don't have the machinery and like what's the point of investing so much in machines you could always do that you know a lot of um suppliers, suppliers are like, willing yeah. to do this or even like us we've been asked before like hey can how much do you charge me just to get these boards straight for me and that's something that we do so um don't be discouraged let's get on to planing and then let's get on to gluing let's go let's go so now we're gonna pass them through a planer and the goal is to get each of them to the same exact size so i'm going to look for the thickest one of all and start from there down until all of them are cut to the same exact size Okay, so I put on my mic because I wanted to give you guys a little bit of the, an explanation on how I get the thickness to run these. So I found my thickest board, which is going to be this one, right? And I usually place it here on the machine and I'm going to go up. So I'm going to bring the cutter up until I'm able to fill it comfortably. Once I'm able to fill it, if you guys notice right here, I'm going to put it and I'm going to go down right there. So it moved, right? So she's kind of tight in there. So now I'm gonna bring her back once completely, take her out and then go back all the way again. Now, when we go in, we know that she's gonna cut. Some boards are not gonna even cut at this point because they are gonna be a little bit thinner, but that's fine. We're gonna keep passing them through, passing them through until they're all the same size. Planing is one of those steps of every build that take longer than what it seems. The truth is that sometimes just to get one board straight, it takes roughly 30 minutes to at least an hour. The planer head only eats about a 16th of an inch at a time, so it could be a very long and tedious step. So what we try to do is just be together, have a good time, make it fun, and dance a little. Okay, so now that the boards have been fully planed, it's time to actually start working on the edges. Um, there are different ways that you can edge a board. You can always we're gonna throw a joiner as we've done in previous videos. A lot of people use a joiner sled with their table saw, which that also works. But what we've been doing, especially for these bigger pieces, is we grab our track saw, get that first um, edge, I would say, perfectly square, and then we clean up the other one on the table saw. We have found that that's what works best, especially with these bigger boards. The track saw does a very nice job of just giving you a perfect 90 degree angle, especially since the boards are perfectly flat. So let's do that. Um, and then our goal is to have this fully glued up tonight. As you can see, the sun's setting behind us, which is very beautiful. So we're gonna do that. And then once that has uh, dried, then we can go on to the next step. If you are a subscriber who's been around for a while, you may recognize this table and this track software when we built our dining table, which we will make sure to link above. 
In all honesty, a track saw is a very good tool to have in your shop, but it does take some time to get used to it, so just be patient with yourself. This is that point in the video where many months passed and we had to rework the boards all over again. But don't worry, we'll spare you from watching us plane all these boards all over again and jump straight to the actual glue up. We tried to match up the boards to the design that we had initially drawn months ago and even though we struggled a bit, we finally figured it out. The problem was that some of the boards had cracks that we wanted to avoid so we had positioned the boards in a unique way to avoid that being part of the final build. With the panel finally glued up, it was time to move it. If you've ever tried to move a solid hardwood piece panel this size, you know that it takes more than one person. A few months ago we posted a video on Instagram where someone said that if we found wood to be heavy then maybe we were in the wrong profession. I would honestly say that if you think that solid hardwood is not heavy then you have clearly never tried it. After 24 hours the glue was finally cured and it was time to remove the clamps and get this piece ready to surface. Luckily we are blessed that we have a machine that can straighten this board for us after the glue up but if you've been around here long enough you know that that, that wasn't always the case. For a very long time we just had to ensure that our glue up was perfectly straight and then we would remove any hard knocks or uneven areas using a sander or a hand planer. Another option would be to contact a local woodworker who may be willing to do this job for you but don't let anyone ever tell you that you can't do it we did it for a very long time come on babe you can do it yeah you can do it <laughs> unfortunately when we were surfacing one side of the board we lost the pattern of the piece that we wanted to cut out so that kind of forced us to start all over and get a new shape Luckily for us, it actually worked out because we liked this shape a little bit more than the original one. So we just made sure to go ahead and mark it real nice and we decided to cut it out before surfacing the other side. This was going to ensure that we had the shape we wanted and we did not have to do this a third time. Now it was time to make the pebble table. This one was a little easier to do because we knew we wanted it to be rounded but just have a small little accent to it. So we went ahead and drew it out and also cut it out with the jigsaw. We wanted to show you guys that even though this is our full-time career and it is our business, it is something that you can do if you absolutely put your mind to it. As we mentioned earlier, you could skip all these steps by buying S4S lumber and with simple tools like a jigsaw, you can cut out the perfect coffee table. Our goal with each and every one of our videos is to show you how you can recreate these beautiful pieces with beginner friendly tools. Our whole channel started as DIY friendly and we want to make sure to keep that theme going no matter how far our career takes us. Not everyone wants to build these pieces and that's okay, that's what we're here for. But if you do want to build it, that's also what we're here for. With both tabletop pieces done, it was time to get started on the legs. We cut down some more of that red oak and then cut it down to the size that we needed to make the legs. Like most of our builds, we are guilty of planning how the pieces are going to look, but never really think about how we're going to attach it or how we're going to do the base for the tabletop. With this being such a unique shaped set, we knew that we wanted something that had a lot of character. So as soon as we finished the actual tabletop, we both looked at each other and said, it has to be rounded. But not only rounded, it needs to be perfectly rounded that looks like the top and the bottom are connected. And we decided to carry that onto the legs. Now looking at the finished product, we believe that that's exactly what made this furniture piece. We tested different roundover bits to get that perfect cylinder looking connection on both sides and once we finally got it we were so pleased with the outcome as we always say we would always recommend doing any test work on pieces of scrap that you have left over from your build you don't want to do something on the actual piece that you need and then after regret it
We wanted to make a very sleek and minimalistic appeal to the legs and do something that will seem like the tabletop is just floating. At first we had thought of installing some metal C channels like we did in our dining table build, but figured that this was just going to drive the cost of the table up and not only that did not feel like it was absolutely necessary for the size of this coffee table so we did a little bit of thinking and came up with the perfect design to make these legs be exactly what we wanted we made a wooden channel that would sit flush inside of the tabletop and would keep the sleek design and give the table support our thinking was that this channel would be threaded into the legs and then after the whole piece would attach to the tabletop we drilled a few pilot holes of where the screws were going to be and then used double-sided tape where we had previously marked the legs so that we can attach the actual channel to the legs. There are many different theories and different ways that you can do this. This is just what has worked for us in the past. Honestly speaking, this part of the build is always one of the most nerve-wracking because if the legs are not perfectly aligned, then when it's time to actual, actually assemble this piece, then nothing will be aligned. So what we would always recommend is just take your time, take it slow, and you will get there. As you can see here, it worked absolutely perfectly and we were able to drill the pilot holes into the legs. But what we made sure to do was mark the leg to, to the appropriate fitting of the channel. That way, during assembly, we would not get mixed up. One of the best parts of doing these builds is that your imagination really does get to be challenged and gets to run wild. We have made many mistakes when doing these sorts of attachments in the past and we will just say that if this is your first time doing it, don't be scared, step outside of your comfort zone and we promise that you will figure it out. Since we had cut out the shape using the jigsaw, we decided to run the entire piece along our flush trim bit just to get any little corners where the blade might have curved a little bit or just not cut straight. We did this not only along the tabletop of the big piece but also the small one just to ensure that everything was nice and square. First we did it on one side and then we flipped it and did it on the other. Once that was done, all I was left to do was to give the tabletop pieces the same roundover profile that the legs had and then get ready for sanding. As with all of our furniture pieces, we always start our sanding process with a 60 grit sandpaper and then move our way up all the way to 150 grit. There are some people out there or you may hear that you need to go up to 220 or even 320 grit. Now that is absolute preference. We have found that what's worth best with our sealer is to go up to 150 as you are still getting that very smooth finish of the higher grits but will allow the sealer and the stain to fully penetrate into the wood. This is totally optional and up to you but this is what's worked best for us in the past. This will vary if you are working with epoxy or using some sort of different finish but we would always recommend to just read the instructions that your preferred finish or stain recommend as they usually tell you what would work best with their product something that has definitely taken our sending to the next level throughout our career is that we started using these sponges that we purchased off amazon these sponges what allow us to do is to give that perfectly round finish especially with the higher grits before we would just use our sandpaper but no matter how much we tried there was always one little line that we couldn't get rid of these foam pads are sold in quantity and we usually buy them or two to three at a time they do last a very long time and they will ensure that you get that perfect round edge profile that you're looking for so what we do is we will sand the faces first then we'll go ahead and attach the foam pad hit all the edges water pop it and then just repeat with the higher grit all the way up to the 150 grit that we do for these furniture sets once we finish sanding all of the pieces up to 150 grit it was time to get ready to seal the entire piece before applying any sealer we dusted off our area and then blew each and every piece using compressed air just to make sure that there was no wood dust in, inside of the grain or even inside of the channel itself. To seal this product we decided to use an Odie's oil in the stain dark. We'll make sure to link the one that we use in the description below but Odie's oil is a brand that we 
absolutely stand by we use it on the majority of our products and love the finish that it gives as well as the smell that it gives Unfortunately, we were so excited to actually finish and build this coffee table set that we completely forgot to record any of the assembly. But we can honestly say that it was absolutely worth it. We love how this piece came out and are so happy that we challenged ourselves to build such a unique set that is fully adaptable to any space. If you're interested in purchasing this coffee table set, it is selling on our website for $1,000. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any of our future builds. We have a lot coming your way. Thank you guys for joining us on this build and we will see you on the next one. Bye!